What's up, what's up, what's up, Indies? So sorry. I have been having some technical difficulties. So if you are on the Indies Live watch page, you are not going to be able to see this because for some reason, things are broken. I don't know why. Welcome, Facebook. Welcome, YouTube. Um, I'm going to drop a note in the Indies Live page because for some reason, they cannot see these things. So let me grab the new link and send that to them. So let me know if you can see me. Um, let me know if you can hear me. That's also important. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to flag down Cirque to see if he can help me. Because I think on YouTube we are still not live. <sighs> well, how are you all doing? My name is Corinne. I am here to help you audit your things. So if you don't know how this works, um, we are going to be answering Indie Pro questions first. And usually this event is a Indie Pro only session, but we have shifted because of all the things going on in the world right now. We wanted to bring in as many Indies as we could. And so for now, for the month of April, we are going to be doing these publicly so that everyone can participate. So I'm really excited. I'm hoping that somebody at the Orlando headquarters can make sure that the right video <laughs> is posted on the Indies Live watch page. Because uh, right now, this, uh, this stream is a different stream. Tech difficulties, you gotta love it. So, um, but let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. So what we're gonna do is go through the comments from the Indie Pros first because they uh, left their links in kind of our private chat. And then I'm gonna open it up to all the comments. Um, I actually also need to go live on Insta because we extra and we do all the things. So hold with me while I get there. Because, you know, nothing can go right on the very first try. So, uh, let me make sure that all the kiddos can see me on IG, too. All right. So, um, of course not. Of course things don't try at the first. All right. So, let me uh, go ahead and share this screen right quick so y'all can see the questions. And I'm going to try to troubleshoot and answer questions because... That's how we do. So, um, sharing my screen. And I'll try to zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. Because um, I know sometimes when we're live streaming and reading things, we tend to mumble. So this way, you can see all of the stuff just as easy as I can. All right. So, um... Oh gosh, all the troubleshooting happening simultaneously right now. It's so much fun. All right, so our first question is leave links here. Yes, indeed, leave links right there. All right, so we are looking at a landing page. Let's do that first. A landing page? That's your Facebook page. <laughs> Apparently, this is your landing page. All right, so... I'm going to go ahead and just audit this as if it is a landing page, right? If this is the only place that you have to send people. So, um, but I definitely recommend checking out our uh, fan page optimization training because the first thing it'll tell you is that you need a button, yo. You need a button right here. <laughs> so then um, I have somewhere, it says click to sign up, but then there's no button. So the way that you can do this is by going into your page settings and it'll show you how to put a call to action button, which is what they call it, on your page. So cool, you've got some live stream happening. I'm happy about that. And you've got some video. All right, so I don't have much to give you on this, unfortunately, 
because I need a button because I'm assuming that that is supposed to lead to somewhere and right now it doesn't. So that would be my first recommendation. I'm sorry I can't give you more insight. Maybe uh, you can post that link in one of the chats <laughs> to help us out with that. So very cool. All right. So the next question is from Yon Music. I've just set up a separate signup page on my website, which will eventually serve as my landing page. I was having some issues with my privacy policy. I have one at the footer of this page. Can you please let me know if it's enough? I want to start working with Messenger lead ads. Just waiting for the module to be updated. Thank you so much. All right. So before I click on this, just so you know, the Messenger training is actually almost 100% updated. There's still that banner on it, but everything in it has been revamped. We just have a couple of lessons still incoming. So, um, but in the meantime, you can totally go through that training and get all the things that you need there. So um, just, just so you're aware of that. So let's go ahead and check out your page. All right. Join the Yawn Tribe. Very cool. Um, all right, so the first thing I'm seeing is that there's something over here that I can't totally read. I'm assuming that this is your privacy policy. So I'll get over there in a second. But one thing I would say for sure is that on this page, right, all you want people to do is see the offer, right? Um, it's cool that your, you know, your name or your logo is up here and that's totally fine. But beyond that, I, I don't want to see any of these menus. And the reason why is because it's most likely going to distract people from the thing that they came to do. Um, it's, you know, it, some people may click through on it. Some people may not, right? It's not necessarily a huge fail, but you're um, kind of testing the waters with that, right? Like you're giving them an opportunity to go somewhere else. So I would figure out a way to remove that top bar of the menu um, and, oh, and it scrolls all the way down with it too. Yeah. So you definitely want to get rid of that. That's a distraction. I like the uh, kind of uh, chaotic photo you have here. I think that's cool. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that this, like the highlight that goes behind a text, it can be a little bit... Um, just look a little undeveloped, right? The best thing to do would be to somehow get a, you could get like kind of an opaque or a low opacity uh, kind of box behind this to add like an overlay, a darkness to it so that they can still read. And then you could keep that in the white text or in something of high contrast. And that way it just looks a little bit more finished. Whereas this looks a little bit like, you know, shoved in there. Um, so you're joining the Young Tribe, you sign up to your email list and receive these things, name, email, I want in. Cool. So that's pretty basic, right? Um, I, I think something that you want to consider is that, you know, you're saying fan access to exclusive material, including the album experience, right? We want the album experience itself to be the feature. So, um, and we definitely want that experience to have a name, right? So think of something that goes along with your brand. And actually, we were just talking about this um, as, a, as a group this morning at our company uh, kind of stand-up meeting, which is how we start the day. Uh, we were talking about bringing in creativeness to that album experience. Now, I know it says that your release date and more details are coming, um, but still, give them something more, right? Like, do what you can to figure out a name that's on brand, but isn't like just the name of the album, right? Something that's kind of a spinoff that gives them an idea of what the experience is going to be like. Is it crazy? Is it fun? Is it serious? Is it meditative, right? What are the descriptors you would use for it? And give it a name that kind of alludes to that, right? And bring in your branding with it as well. Um, because this is not super compelling, you know? Um, people aren't necessarily going to want to just sign up for some random thing. So that's what I would recommend there. Um, you could absolutely include the updates about your live shows, but if this is a landing page for people that give you their email, um, you know, and, and it has a lot to do with this album experience, you may just want to make it all about whatever that ends up being. Um, even if you don't know totally what is going to be happening with it, the things that I would prioritize is naming the experience, committing yourself to a release date, 
and having a, a few ideas about what is going to be in that experience, right? What kind of things, even if you don't know everything down to a T, that's how I would um, recommend moving forward with that. So that is my two cents there. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful. Um, let me see if I can get this privacy policy to show up. Okay, got it. It's over here. So you're going to want to find a tool that's a little bit more responsive. Um, the other thing too I'd recommend is that something that you can do that's acceptable with a privacy policy is instead of putting it in the text over here, you can put a link down here in the bottom that says privacy policy and that links to a separate page that has this all this jargon in there, right? Um, that's, I think that's probably the best thing because otherwise people are going to be like, what is this? And it's just, again, when we create a landing page, we want people to be as not distracted as possible. So I would go ahead and put a link down here and link out to a separate page that has all this on there if they're, you know, interested in that. And that should qualify for any kind of ads that require a privacy policy and all of that. You shouldn't have to put it right on the page. Um, I also think this signature is pretty cool. Um, if there is a way to replace this with that, in theory, like, you know, people are going to be coming to this page because they already know who you are, right? It's not going to be cold audience. So I would remove this. If this is your standard website header, I would um, get rid of that and just put this cool signature up there. I think it's got a nice vibe. It goes with this chaotic kind of feel, right? So, um, so yeah, that's what I would recommend there. Otherwise, um, get that, I would get that, figure out a way to put that opaque box behind it, right? Something like nice with rounded corners could be good and you could make it black, but at like 20% opacity. Most website tools will allow you to do stuff like that. Um, so I would go ahead and do that and then have all of this be white text, um, and that would probably be the, the first few changes I would make to this landing page if it were, you know, a client of mine or something. So, yeah, but I love this, this vibe. It makes me feel like I want to know what the album's about. It's very interesting. So that's good, right? <laughs> awesome. Oh, I need to make sure that I am sharing my screen all the places because I'm running so many different things right now. So give me one second. Yep, on, a, on YouTube, I'm still just showing me. So I will uh, share that real quick here. <laughs> there you go. That is uh, the Jan landing page that we were talking about. So, but I see that you are on Facebook, Jan, so we should be good to go. Um, so you set up your, as you're saying in the comments, you're saying that you set up a separate sign-up page on your website, which will eventually serve as a landing page. Got it. Um, so yeah, this might be something that you need to figure out how to separate it from the standard settings of the rest of your site. That's why that header's there. So that's what I would recommend as far as that's concerned. Cool. So I hope that's helpful and make, make some of those edits and then bring it back to us. And um, I'd love to see what happens next with it. Cool. All right, so the next question, oops, I scrolled down. All right, so you currently have a mailing list video ad that leads to a landing page asking for a mailing list sign up in return for a live EP slash video. This is the mailing list ad, targets 95% video views, great. This is the landing page, got it. A MailChimp landing page, we'll see about this. <laughs> And so far you've gotten 329 link clicks and about four cents Australian per link click. That's good. But we're only actually getting 25 mailing list subscribers. Is this normal or is the landing page suboptimal? I'm gonna guess without getting into it yet that it's that the landing page is suboptimal because MailChimp doesn't offer a whole bunch of stuff. Also, we are tracking the landing page activity with a Facebook pixel and I did notice that first time on mobile MailChimp throws a gigantic, this site tracks you with cookies warning, which might be a turnoff. Indeed. <laughs> uh, P.S. Here's the fan finder. Okay, great. So I'm going to take a look at your ad real quick. Um, and I think you post a lot in the Indies group. I think I've actually seen your fan finder. I'm pretty sure Jesse loved it uh, when I think it was his audit session two weeks ago. 
So this is the ad. Okay, cool. And so I remember from your uh, fan finder video, this is, you're wearing either similar things or there's a similar vibe to it, right? I'm assuming you maybe shot this where you recorded. I kind of like how you guys are, you know, rotating around. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of personality here. Perfect. Yeah, this looks good. Yeah, there's there's definitely kind of like a a lo-fi attraction, right? To stuff that's just shot, bam, right there. And you guys are moving around and flipping. I think that's great. And there's definitely face recognition here, right? Like there is, um, you're able to like identify you from the fan finder. I recognize this group of people. So that's always super important in a opt-in ad as well. So that they're like, wait, who's this? So, whoops, I don't need to see Jimmy Fallon right now. All right, so this is your landing page. All right, and yes, MailChimp is super restrictive. I mean, I didn't get a warning message, um, you know, the same way, but it's definitely, yeah, MailChimp leaves a lot to be desired. And you can track landing page uh, views with the pixel, right? But MailChimp does not allow you to track leads like when people actually complete it now you can kind of get around that by sending them to a custom url after they finish the um like after they fill it out but it requires another click and chances are a lot of people aren't going to click on that so um i i would definitely recommend trying to figure out a different landing page provider um there's a lot of options out there or you can just make one on your website and uh, install the pixel there. There's lots of, depending on who your website provider is, there's, you know, lots of different integrations where you can put, you know, your, your pixel on there so you can track leads because you're going to probably want to optimize for leads so that you can get, see, see how many people will just give you their email, right? And then Facebook knows that that's who you're targeting. So, um, so yeah, and you've got your email address here now. So let me show you something here. If I click that pixel, right, I'm getting a page view. What are we looking at? I just see you to, oh, darn it. <laughs> Guys, the technical difficulty. You're so patient with me and I really appreciate it. So let me, let me fix this screen problem we're having right now. Give me one moment. It's just one of those days, guys. It's one of those days. How's everybody doing? Should I tell a joke while you're waiting? <laughs> I'm trying to fix this. <sighs> Say yes. All right. Very shortly, everyone's going to be looking at the same screen, which is going to be great. And let me get down there. Perfect. All right. So now everybody should be saying what we want to see. Look at that, guys. We got it. I got like 25 windows open <laughs> right now. So now, hopefully, you guys on Facebook can now see this screen. Let me know if you cannot see it. Um, so yeah, so this is, um, if I, sh I'll show you really quick, like if we go to these, this pixel helper, which I recommend everybody use that, um, to identify where your pixels are firing properly or not properly. Um, you can see that I've got page view here, right? So if I put in, um, like a junk email address, I'm just gonna put in something fake. So I apologize if this bounces in your MailChimp, but, um, and I click send my EP now. You can see that we're not getting a lead fire here, which is what we want optimally, right? Um, and that's because when we are identifying people who like putting their emails into things or who do it 
uh, consistently, Facebook kind of tracks those types of users. So um, unfortunately, MailChimp doesn't allow you to do that. Now you can put a link in here, but it's not going to be clickable like this, this thank you message. You're not going to be able to make it clickable. So in theory, right, you could put a link here and be like, you know, thank you, click here to confirm, right, which is like an extra step. And that could go to a page that, you know, fires off a lead in Facebook, but it's not optimal. So um, you can probably get some, um, you know, depending on who provides your website, you can probably get some insight from their help documents on, you know, different email integrations or landing page integrations that they include that they actually sync with. Um, but that's what I would recommend for that. That's most likely what you're dealing with with your subscriber rate. So um, I hope that's helpful. All right, so let's talk to Brian. Um, and I'm going to minimize some things here. All right. Um, so Brian says, I've got a couple questions about looking using lookalike audiences on multiple campaigns. Okay, I'm going to read through this fast. I'm running my second fanfare and using a lookalike for my first, which is still running. Okay, so you've got a qualifier video. Getting that first lookalike audience was super expensive, so I'm glad I don't have to use interest targeting this time around. Got it. Your plan is to create a lookalike audience for the second one once it hits 1,000. So far, so good. Yeah, that sounds right. That's all Facebook, simple enough. Sounded good to me, Brian. Um, on Instagram, you're using that first lookalike audience as well. To be clear, it's a lookalike audience based on Facebook video views for a format video, not IG views for the truncated two minute, of course. Um, I was planning to treat a lookalike from Instagram viewers, but that's always off. So I'm ready to cut off my first fan fighter completely. Um, okay, so here's, here's the thing about lookalike audiences. We are creating audiences of millions, right? So chances are that the people who are engaging whether it's on Facebook or IG, if you're using the Facebook lookalike, you're still likely allowing for Facebook to find the correct, um, the correct people, right? The right customer avatars, the people who are, um, you know, interested in your stuff. Chances are that that person looks very similar on Facebook and Instagram, right? Because Facebook is tracking both. So I wouldn't worry too much about feeling like you have to have a, a separate IG lookalike. And that's the thing with data is that it's really easy to get in the weeds on this stuff and feel like you got to drill down closer and closer and, you know, like make things really accurate. And I know that we do stress the importance of data, but that data is imperfect in some ways. And it, at some point you have to kind of tr use tools that you trust to manage these things. So in this case, I would say trust the Facebook algorithm because the Facebook algorithm is also the Instagram algorithm, right? In theory, as far as ads are concerned. So, um, you know, if anything, you're just finding people who would watch longer than that two minutes on IG, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about, you know, doing that. Um, you said, I wish there was a way to create a look like based off the two custom audiences. Yeah, I get that. But in the end, it's probably very similar avatars between the two. And so I wouldn't get too, too worried about that. All right, moving on to Marvin. Let me move my screen over again a little so everyone can see what's happening. Okay, so Marvin's been overwhelmed with consuming the volume of content and taking action has been a bit of a challenge. You have a website, you're active on social media, and numerous mailing lists. Putting all the pieces together has been daunting, um, even though you're not necessarily a beginner. Yeah, totally. You have fans, followers, body of work, planning on launching a new recording, and would like to expand my reach fan base. Is there a constructive sequence you suggest rather than starting from scratch? Um, I am, you know, kind of, I am biased, but I think indie founder if you've got uh, the budget, is amazing um, in helping you. One of the things why Founder was built is to kind of construct, um, you know, help you kind of segment all this stuff out and balance it. And we have people coming into Founder who are brand new, people who have 10 years worth of content and albums. Um, and so that would be a really advanced way to do it. Otherwise, I would recommend starting with fan page optimization, ones and zeros, um, those can kind of help you 
gather the things that make sense before you dig into like big old trainings like fan finder method and um ultimate album launch those things can kind of help you get you kind of help get you focused right um indie founder does have a great roadmap but um those are the two that i would recommend if you're like what the heck do i do with all this start with the buddy system which you um you may or may not have seen as well as those other two trainings and that will help you (laughs) <laughs> so I know there's a whole lot Marvin but you got this man and we're here for you make sure that you're in the pro group because there are some smart people there and the open to the public indies group also has some really great posts in there from other members who have felt just like you you're not alone so that's what I would recommend um, okay Laura's here um, hi, Corinne. I'm really excited about joining the audit with you. I signed up for a new pro six weeks ago. I'm running an evergreen album launch for my album, which I launched last year, released last year. Great. Love feedback on the assets. If you only get to look at one, first priority is my sales page. And your album experience is seven days long. And I have included the sales page on day seven. Is this the right way to do it? Sounds good to me. All right. So I'm going to open up all these links. I may not get to cover all of them. Kind of depends on how it deep in we go. Ah, MailChimp landing page. If you saw my uh, feedback earlier, you'll know what I think about MailChimp landing pages and that those can be difficult, right? You're probably, even if you're running successful opt-ins on MailChimp, I would say you're probably losing a good portion of them that you wouldn't be losing if you were using a like dedicated landing page on your site or from a landing page provider. Um, so that's just, you know, something to consider. All right. And I'm looking at your, I love this. Um, I love the look, right? It's just kind of whimsical, really goes along with love always wins, you know, like it just has the same vibe. So your branding is very consistent. And then you have a digital download. All right. So now I'm looking at Okay, so this is a nice clear site, right? You've got the opt-in right at the top. I love that. This uh, logo is really cute. I'm into that. Um, You're telling people exactly what they're going to get. So yeah, and for everyone else who's watching, it's always a a really good idea to have the form right at the top, even though you're like, but Kryn, I haven't told them what they're going to get yet. In theory, you have, right? Either through your artistry, through your opt-in ad, We want people, by the time they get here, we want them to kind of know what that is. And so, Laura, that's something I would also recommend for your ad. Don't worry about it being too long, right? So even if you kept the copy that is in there right now, just that little short part, and then expanded upon that below it, that's what I would recommend. Because the more that we can warm people up before they even get to that page, the better off we are. So um, that's what I would recommend to everybody with your opt-in ads make sure from your fan finder to your opt-in ad that it is clearly the same person right especially um, if you are in similar dress or you know you have a lot of face in your fan finder and then there's your face on the ad make sure that there's something that they can come you know combine with what they already saw from you and they're like oh yeah I see the correlation I saw that person before if there's too much from one to the other and you're running a fan finder that looks nothing like your opt-in ad, chances are that someone who's only seen you for that period of time is not going to recognize you the second time. So that's something for everyone to keep in mind. And then let that ad do the heavy lifting for you. Either have really great imagery and a, a nice long description in the ad, or put a video of yourself in that. Um, I We also, at the agency level, have experimented with, you know, say there's a video and people have engaged with that, We'll like splice in just a couple seconds of that video before cutting to the artist talking about what they're going to be offering you. Um, and that can be, you know, pretty successful too. You have to test, of course, but that's one thing that I would recommend trying. So yes, I like that there's a form right up top because if people already know why they're here, they're just going to give you their information right away. Don't make them scroll unless they want to. You're telling people exactly what they're getting. Everything here is very on on brand. You've got a similar color scheme, right? Like this, this photo has a similar color scheme to the back. Even like the walls behind you in this have, you know, are a little bit seamless, right? You get some quotes. You've got what my fans are saying. 
cute. Yeah, I, I actually like that you put a little like iridescent block here instead of just like a gray bar. It's kind of cute. I like that. Cool. Make sure that you put another opt-in box down here at the bottom, right? If they scroll all the way to the bottom because they're just digging what you're having to say, make sure they have a place to do it again. Now that might be a limitation in a MailChimp landing form. I'm not sure because I haven't used one lately. But if that's the case, um, you know, you definitely want, um, you know, you, that's another reason to find another provider. But if you can, insert another one of these forms down at the bottom. That's my recommendation. All right. And I'm just going to look at this real quick. This is cute, simple, clear. Yeah, nice little video. Got it. I like this little banner. That's fun. So if I click, see this isn't clickable. I would make these clickable, right? Even if all it does is go to the same place that this does, I would make these clickable. Put a link on these images because they might just get trigger happy and click right from there. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot happening here. Um, I would also add to your pixel, I would add a view content event to this page. Because then in theory, you can re-trigger people who viewed this content with an ad, right? If they came to this and watched this and then, you know, their kid was screaming or for some reason they didn't continue to scroll down the page, you know that they saw this though and you can follow up with ads. So I would go ahead and put a view content on here that you can retarget with an ad that says, hey, did you see this? You know? Um, but this is, yeah, this is cute. I think that the, you've got some good options here. You've got the CD and the poster or the CD with the poster, right? Um, so yeah, I think this is, uh, I'm sure this is effective, you know? All right, cool. That's all I can give you right now, but everything looks great. Your branding is consistent and I think that's one of the most important things. All right, moving on to Jake. Jake says, hi Corinne, thanks in advance. You're welcome, Jake. <laughs> About to run a fan finder and would love any feedback on our 30 second ad video. Well, all right. I'm a producer trying to uh, expand my client base, so I've had to adapt everything a bit. Uh, should video views still be my objective as far as copy? I'm thinking straight question or pattern interrupt, something along the lines of why haven't you made the record of your dreams? We can bring the sound in your head to life. I like that one. Um, any thoughts on producer campaigns? Appreciated. All right, cool. So let's take a look here. Mm hmm. Cool. And so everybody knows the recommendations that I'm going to make here are a little different than I would for a typical artistry slash musician. Um, because obviously we're we're marketing a product, a service here. Um, so, but yeah, I think this is good. There's, I like that you've got this color that comes in at the end. Um, you've got some quick shots, right? Right in the beginning, it shows a few different types of people who would be a good fit. So if your audience identifies with any of those particular avatars, that's good. Shows the range of your company, um, at like the, the range of people who could be serviced by your country or company talking. So, um, yeah, so I think that that looks good. Um, definitely, you know, for 30, a 30 second video would be obviously too short. If we were talking about, um, you know, a, a musician, we wouldn't recommend a 30 second video, but I think for services, that's totally fine. Um, I'd recommend that your landing page, um, has a similar vibe, right? Like if you have black and white with just a little bit of color, very similar to the video. Make sure that people are connecting the dots between the video they saw and the landing page. Like, oh yeah, I'm, I've seen, I'm in the same place, you know? Don't let, uh, when they click to something else, have it look drastically different. You don't want that. But yeah, I think that this looks great. So, um, and I, again, I love that we can bring the sound in your head to life. I think that's great. Um, things like, you know, something like offering someone the thing of their dreams, I think is a little sticky. I think a lot of marketers use that. So I would sway away from that. But 
things that are like visually enticing or, you know, um, have, have kind of like put a picture in your mind, like bring the sound in your head to life. I think that's great. So I would spin off more of that. So great job. I'm into it. Greg Owens, one of my favorite former indie founders. How you doing, Greg? You're running a permission campaign to 75% video views. You've only converted like four people. Okay. Spent easily $40, so it's not going great. Yeah, that's tough. Um, following are the two ads and then the landing page. The bribe is a free secret EP experience. <laughs> I should mention before... before Sorry, I should mention that before running the landing page ads, I did try some messenger ads, but it seemed like people were never replying as I wanted them to. Instead, they wouldn't reply with their email, so it got frustrating. Gotcha. Although I did get a few subs, it was still super expensive, although cheaper than the reach ad below. You're running a reach campaign. Okay. Um, so I will comment on that. We do experiment with reach campaigns in certain situations, but... Um, a reach campaign is probably not, it, that might be a big reason as to why you're not getting the results you want. Um, because basically Facebook's going to be like, all right, who's eligible in this audience? I'm going to show it to everyone. And sometimes that's not the most efficient way for your dollars to be spent. Um, because, uh, you know, Facebook is, you're, you're, it's going to find people that are willing to give you their email if you give it to them. You may not have a big enough budget to reach everyone. Right. So Facebook is like, OK, this budget only allows me to show 80 percent um, or maybe even like 20 percent of the people eligible in this audience. I can only make it go to the to 20 percent with this budget. That means that they're not identifying people who necessarily will give you their email out of the 100 percent. They're just showing it to as many people as they can. So you may want to go for either landing page views or leads. Um, usually what I do is I try to scale it down. So if I'm doing like an opt-in campaign, right, first I will optimize for leads. I'll make sure that the lead fires, right, in the pixeling. And then if I don't get enough leads, um, Facebook wants 50 events in a week to really optimize. So if you're not getting 50 in a week, which in this case you're not, then I would optimize for landing page views. And if I can't get enough landing page views, I'll optimize for clicks, right, and I'll go down. Um, but a reach campaign is probably the absolute last priority for me um, when I'm doing stuff like this. That's like when nothing else works. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I would try those if you haven't already before you resort to a reach campaign. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and look at your ads real quick. All right, I've got a secret EP that has never been released and never will be released to anyone. Guess what? That's you. <laughs> I like that. That's cute. Want to check it out? Did I mention it was free? Just click through more. Yeah, I love how it's quippy. You know? It's light. So I'm into that. All right, let me listen to this. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that video. That one's creepy AF. Um, all right, cool. So you've got a mixture of you talking and you're kind of reviving their interest in the videos that you're retargeting. So I actually think that that's great. That's exactly what I was talking about, you know, giving people that recall moment. So great job there. That totally makes sense. And then this is your landing page. Great. Is this on ClickFunnels? This looks like it's on ClickFunnels. <laughs> anyway, um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that's what it looks like. Um, okay, cool. So I don't know how I feel about this typewriter font. Um, oh, hey, real quick, yawn. You see this opacity? This just like little bit of color behind the text block here? Um, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I would recommend putting behind because if Greg had just put this white text on front of this picture, it wouldn't have really stuck out as well. But because he's just got this little bit of shading, it looks great. So that's that's the kind of thing I was referencing. Um, where can I send your copy? To here. All right. And you've got your pixel firing properly. Great. So, yeah, I would say um, 
this typewriter font is a little bit, um, I don't know, it doesn't really go with this, right? Do you have the fonts that were in this uh, logo? Because if you do, that would be tight. You could use this as like your big, big font, or you could find a font that's similar, right? Just so that it goes along with the branding. Um, this typewriter font, it's becoming the new Comic Sans, <laughs> um, where a lot of people are using it. And so it just, you know, it, it might come off a little bit, um, just not in a way you want. So, but this font is also super cool. So if you were able to put that on your buttons or something, that would be tight. Um, otherwise, you could pick something similar. I also would suggest that for the smaller text, you find something that's a little bit more sans friendly, like more legible. Um, especially like if we're, you know, looking at it on mobile, which let me check that out. Oops, my bad. I'm so bad about this sometimes. Oh my goodness, my trackpad is going crazy. All right, so let me look at this on mobile. All right. Okay, yeah, so on mobile, it they're almost the same size. Um, so, but I would say for, th which is fine, but I'm just saying, I think that for like first name, email address, click to sign up, you've got a different font, especially because that typewriter font has such a vibe to it. Um, if you weren't gonna change both of them, I would say at least change like this in the opt-in form and this in the what you get situation. Um, I would change those to be something that's just a little bit more legible. So usually what I do is when I'm looking for a nice legible font, I will shrink the size down and, you know, wherever I'm building it down to like eight pixels, you know, and I'm like, can I barely read it? If I can barely read it at eight pixels, but I can still read it, then I'm probably good, you know? Um, so that's one way that I kind of, it's just an eyeball test, right? There's no like law about that but um, that's usually what I try to test myself with when I'm looking at these small fonts um, and, and finding something that's more legible no matter what device people are on. So yeah I mean I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong here. Um, I might put the video at the top um, as far as like this copy right like just put the form up there so that if your ad's doing its job, right, the form is just directly available, or maybe you could even just make this a little smaller so it doesn't feel like a feature as much. And make this video the star, um, because if they're here, it's because they like your face, because they responded to your, you know, your video ad most likely. So um, I would put that near the top. But something else to consider here, when opt-in ads aren't going well, it's usually because of either the audience or the offer. I think that based on everything I remember from our founder discussion, your audience is good. It might be your offer. You know, maybe the EP is not enough. Maybe there's, maybe you need to make it more special. Um, and, you know, I like, you're saying that here, right? You're expanding upon it and you've got a, a video explaining it. Um, but it do, it's not really evident until they get, you know, deeper into it. If they don't watch that video in your video ad, it's not it's not obvious what else they're getting besides basically digital downloads um so there might be that um i think as you said in your question yeah you're running a, a video view campaign and then another video view campaign yeah so yeah I, I would say it's probably not audience i would say it, it is probably your offer i don't think there's anything distinctly wrong with your landing page like i gave you a couple of tips on how i would change it but those aren't like that's not what's causing a, a conversion problem. So I would change your campaigns, try for leads or at least landing page views, and um, also like take a look at um, your, your offer. See what else you can give them, right? How else, or even how can you just kind of twist it to make it something else? <laughs> so don't worry, YouTube and Facebook, I'm coming for you. There's just two more in here, and then I'll be over in the comments having a fun old time. That's my goal. All right, so, um, okay, Thomas, your fanfare's been running for about four days. 
You've spent $180 thus far and have 72,000 views on IG, 98,000 views on Facebook. Got it. 0.002 per through play for IG and for Facebook. Here is the video. That is very low, Thomas. That is very low for through play. Um, WTF is the name of this instrument. <laughs> I don't like it. Cool. I'm always down for a raw performance video. That's great. So yeah, that could be leading to some of it. I would also just double check. Uh, and I like that your pinned comment up here is that you've got more music, right? That lets people, if they want to be an automatic buddy, they can kind of find their way there. Right. Um, yeah. And I like the I like the headline. I think this is good. Yeah, I'm into it. I dig it. Um, yeah. And you've got somebody moving with the camera. This is great. It's so good that I forgot your question. You want to pick my brain? OK. Um, pick away. <laughs> I think that it looks good. I, I like the sound of it. I like your look. I like the video look. Um, you know, I think that it's I think that it's good. I am curious about the countries you're targeting just because your costs are so low. Um, usually when I see costs like that, I'm like, oh, they're running to Indonesia. <laughs> so I would double check your countries. But if you are legit getting through plays at that cost, that's tight. You know, it sounds like you're doing well. So if you have more questions about that, leave them in the comments. I will get to them ASAP. All right, so Zeke is building a membership site. Yay! What do you think of this squeeze page? Any way you could improve it? We don't have any email sequences set up. Build your email sequences! Just kidding. And our upsell pages are not completely done, but I'm nearing the end of setting up this huge build. It's not quite ready to explore, but I'm looking for feedback on front pages. Absolutely. Speaking of email sequences, I'm so glad you said that, Zeke. Is there a way to dynamically have a sales retargeting campaign with MailChimp? like if they get stuck on the order page. Yeah, absolutely. And the way that we do that is the same thing I was telling about Laura, is by in the pixel, putting a view content event, which you set it up any other way that you would set up any kind of conversion. If you need more help figuring out what that is, just search in um, the Facebook business help documents on setting up view content events. But essentially, if you are not running like with a store, like a full on store that has automatic pixeling um, in, integrated into it, um, you can put a view content on the order page or even a, um, you could kind of sway with, with an add to cart. Um, I know ClickFunnels kind of does that where it's like, oh, we'll count it as an add to cart because the next thing would be to purchase. Um, so it just kind of depends on what your intent is for the add to cart event. But bare minimum, you could do a view content and you could use a custom conversion, which would basically be, you could name it something different from other view content pages and then retarget those people with an ad and say, hey, what's up? You didn't buy this. Why? You know, that kind of thing. So um, that's that's what you would do with that. Um, now, the as far as like speaking of email sequences, you would have to. Uh, there's there's some plugin providers that you can do that with um, if you have like a Shopify store or depending on what your store provider is that kind of you know it kind of depends um, but it, there's no way to do that like with the Facebook pixel right you might be able to set up a zap for it um, or you could make some assumptions like if you yeah I don't think there's really a way that you can do that without a store that offers an integration to do so. Like if you have a Shopify store, you could use ShopSync and send that to MailChimp and they could retarget. Um, otherwise, Klaviyo, which is K-L-A-V-I-Y-O, is a great retargeter for um, some of the, you know, some of those options. So um, anyway, so it totally depends on your tech stack. Hopefully some of that was insightful, but Google will tell you a bunch about other options. Um, I'm going to close all of these tabs. All right. So hope you're doing well. This is your homepage for your membership, I'm assuming. Cute.
like that. Okay, cool. I like this font. I don't know why I like it so much, but I really like this font. This one down here is a little bit spread out, but I love how the width of the letters themselves are right here. The only thing I would say is, well, I guess that's fine. Like this is part of your logo, Juniper Douglas, because it's kind of like three fonts. And we try to stick to two, but I actually don't think that's terrible because it's part of your name. So, all right. I would say with this, um, I like that you're kind of going from this is the main point to here's what you get with it. Obviously, video performs um, pretty well. So that's great um, to like kind of have at the top of this landing page. Um, I do think that this text is a little bit, I mean, these are just tiny things, right? So don't, don't stress too much about these little feedback things. But um, I think this is a little, I would take the bold off of it if you're going to go with italic. And I would change the tracking letting on this to be a little less wide. But otherwise, I mean, it looks good. It might be cool to have some kind of separation between these, just like a really light line. But performances, unreleased demos and albums, you've got some imagery there to support it, and a free CD sent directly to you. Dude, put that higher. <laughs> put that higher. I think the fact that someone can get something physical for free with the membership is one of the lead points of the offer, in my opinion. That's what I would say. Um, put that higher. But otherwise, yeah, I like it. Meet the creators. Get early access to all these things. Cool. Maybe bullet ties this. There's so much in it that you might you might want to let it bullet, bullet, right? That could be kind of cool. But otherwise, yeah, I think this looks good. Like, it really explains what the benefit of it is. Um, the only thing is if it's like a recurring membership, um, you might want to outline that, right? And you might want to outline, like, if they pay monthly, what are they getting each month? Like, what keeps them from, like, buying this membership and then being like, all right, I got what I wanted out of it, you know? So that's just something to consider. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, my gosh, we have a few more. All right. So for those of you who have not, if you want to hang out, I'm going to get to these comments I'm, a, I'm sorry it's going long. We started late, and I don't want anyone to be left behind. So, um, yeah, just stick around. I will get to all the comments. All right, Lucas says, how are you? Here's a link to my website. Got it. I'm offering a discount for products as a lead magnet on the landing page. It's working okay. Um, I made the site on WordPress. Would love to hear your thoughts on it. All the copies in Spanish. <laughs> I do not know Spanish. So, thank you for translating. We joined forces with TEG and Flash Cookie to create these beautiful pieces. Click here and we'll send you a discount code. Awesome. Um, P.S. While building the website, I was listening to the podcast episodes you did with Circa about websites. It helped a lot. Great. I'm glad to hear that. All right. So, let's look at your site, Lucas. Oh, look. I can pick English. <laughs> Gotta love Chrome. Um... All right, see in the Facebook comment from Mark, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, okay, so download your gift coupon. <laughs> I know that with the Google translation, I'm not gonna like correct any grammar here <laughs> because I know that um, it's probably not 100% accurate. All right, so create these beautiful pieces. You know what would be cool is if you could put a carousel here where you can flip from one to the other. I like this mock-up, but I want closer pictures. That's one thing you could put there. Oh, this is a button. I like how it animates, but it'd be rad if it looked more different from this right away. Because I was like, oh, yeah, that's the words tell me that I can click on it, right? But it didn't visually tell me I could click on it right away. So... Assume people won't read. Not necessarily that they can't, but that they won't. <laughs> so, but I like that it's right at the top, right? You're going to tell them more about it. Um, so that's great. Cool. And then if it, there's a way to add an animation to these, 
again, so right, like you've got a button here and that animates. And then when I scroll down without reading it, I was expecting to be able to click on this. <laughs> so I would either change the formatting of that so that it's obviously different. But if you change this to look more like a button from the get, then that won't be true here anymore, right? They won't look the same anymore. So if you make that change, uh, disregard. I mean, privacy policy. <laughs> I don't know if you did that on purpose, but it's cheeky and I love it. <laughs> cool. I'm just going to click through on your covers because they look interesting. Hmm. They're not loading. You're probably still working on them, so that's fine. All right. You didn't ask me for that. Yeah, I think this is a nice order of things. It's simple. There's not too many, um, too many choices. If this is the same thing, though, like if you're downloading GIF, GIF coupon here and you're downloading GIF coupon here, I would make them make it come that they're the same. You know what I mean? So uh, you have a USB bracelet as a merch item. <laughs> Got it. Um, yeah. So but I love the branding. I think it's really consistent. I think the order of things makes sense. I don't totally. um I think it'd be cool if there was a way to um, put this little tagline about joining forces with these brands, right? Because these are the two brands. Um, putting that kind of separate, I think it might be taking um, either the logos. They don't necessarily visually connect immediately. So connecting those might be good. Um, but I do see how it's relevant to the merch. So yeah. If you can add bigger pictures of this, that's my number one recommendation outside of making this button more clear. But I mean, it looks good. The branding's consistent. I love the background image. The order of things makes sense. I don't totally understand, um, you know, you might want to put more about like click on covers to start the trip. There's a very different objective from the gift coupon. So I would put some more description in here. So, well, what's that? Is that different from the product? Or like, did you create content with these? What is that? So that's the only thing I would I would say about that. But yeah, overall, it's looking great. Okay. All right, we got two more here, and then I'm headed to the comments. Alexander says, bridge page question. While researching the best one, I stopped on Linktree and now testing to do story ads for our first fan finder. Stories ads for your first, your second fan finder. Got it. Right now, this is how it looks. Yesterday, I saw an error message saying the link is broken, and then I found out that somehow it's a common problem, but not only this service is affected by it. Is that true? <laughs> what would you suggest? I was looking for a customizable page with a pixel. Right now, the link is in the bio of our IG. Okay. Major moment. Totally recognize you. All right, so let me look back again at what you're saying is the error. I saw an error message saying the link is broken. Strange. It wasn't broken for me. I'm not sure. That is not an error I've actually had happen to me. So are you saying that the bio link um, going to your um your link tree when people click on it it's saying the link is broken or is it a link tree problem where like link tree is not responding fast enough and gives them an error a little i need a little more detail on that so i can try to be helpful but it worked for me <laughs> i'm interested to see how your stories ads do i hope you come back and tell us how that went because a fan finder via stories is probably a little challenging so i'm interested to see how that works out all right, Jacqueline, also a newly graduated indie founder. She's trying to set up her new retargeting ad with the objective being lead generation, and I'm trying to see the best way to track it. This is the page, okay? That shows up once people opt in, but I don't see how I can add the thank you page URL. I do have a standard lead event on the page, but I don't know how to put that info on my ad. So this uh, a lead event, I need to figure out more with you on this, Jacqueline, because I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, a lead event, a standard lead event will not go on an ad, if that makes sense. 
if you are tracking, if you're setting up the ad for leads and the, um, the lead is firing on the thank you page and people got there via that ad, Facebook will credit the lead to that ad. Now, something to consider is that it may not be um, excluding your own traffic. So that's something to consider if you're going through and testing. That could fire off leads that are not actual leads. Um, so let me take another, take a look here. So I'm assuming, I think you said this is the thank you page, right? So this has all your stuff on it. Is that right? Okay, so this is a page view and a view content. And is this your email? Got it. Okay. And what's firing now? View content. Okay. Got it. So yeah, you're going to want to make sure that your thank you page has the lead and then that you are optimizing for those leads. If you're not getting enough results doing that, again, I would put a, you've got a view content here so you can um, optimize for that or optimize for landing page views, right? And so you can optimize a little more shallow in the funnel. Um, but as far as you, you don't have to attribute a particular pixel event to an ad, that is taken care of in the objective. And Facebook will delineate based on what page you're sending people to and what subsequent pages come from that page. It'll be like, oh, this lead is for this ad, right? So you don't have to designate it if that makes any sense. So that is the deal with that. I hope that's helpful. Um, your founder group is still open if you want to shove it in there. If I didn't get that right as far as what you're asking. Um, okay. So, cool. I am going to go ahead and pop into the comments and just answer some quiggity questions. Um, I need to open all of the things that are managing my live real quick just to make sure you're getting the right view. Hi. All right. So let's go to uh, Facebook first. So Lewis wants me to look at his opt-in page. Tight. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to actually type this manually because Facebook doesn't want me to click on it. That isn't true, is it? It is. It's totally true. Crazy. All right. Well, fortunately, I type fast. So, rafikionline.co.uk backslash opt in. 15860303. Three zero zero one. All right. I guess I do have to share my screen after all. All right. So this is the Rafiki landing page, opt-in page. Excuse me. You got a sign up button right here. I love these fonts. I would, same thing I said to Greg, I would change this one, this smaller bit I would go ahead and change that to something more legible at a small at a small font level um, but I, I do like the font it obviously goes with your branding you know so that's great um, cool so you've got this video which I'm not going to watch all of but I'm going to get a snippet so I can yeah you got some captions cool Winter lockdown, so we can't get together. Yeah, that's really of the moment, right? It's obvious that you're doing it right now. So I like that. That's what we want to see. Um, got another sign up button right here. What does the sign up process look like? Easy enough. Yep, can't mess that up. I saw something. Yep. I was just checking. <laughs> the only thing I would say is, where's your pixel? Is my browser misfiring or do you not have a Facebook pixel on this page? Get that Facebook pixel on that page. Needs to do that. Um, if it's my browser, just be like, yo, shut up. Because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't fire in this helper and you have to like refresh it and stuff. Um, here's why you should join us. Yep, 
all of this text, I would recommend making that the uh, smaller, more legible font so that it's a little bit. You could leave this bold. I actually really like that. But then change all of this to like a more legible font. You can keep the sign up button as that font. I like that. Click sign up. You got more options here. See, this font is nice and legible. I would use that here and here. And maybe even here. That's my two cents on that. It's nice and legible. And then another sign up button. Ta-da! Cool. I love this speak with us thing. I, there's not going to be a lot of people doing that. Um, I would put that near the top. <laughs> because if they're interested in your music, getting a call with you is like legit. Way better than a Facebook group. And I like this help us write the music. I would switch this one and this one. This is my two cents. I mean, if they make it that far down, like they need something to be sold on it. And I think that would sell on it. So yeah, I like it. I like it, Lewis. I think um, the overall look is really cool. I like the background, right? I like that this white pops out, um, you know, where it's like, bam, you get this, <laughs> you know? So yeah, but I also really just like the texture of the background that you have, you know, rolling underneath. It's like reminiscent of this, but also like the gradient doesn't lie exactly the same. Looks very purposeful. I'm into it, man. It's my favorite. I'm down for it. <laughs> cool. All right. So um, let's go ahead and get back into some of more of the comments. All right. So. Um, all right. So there's comments from me telling everyone to bear with us. And everybody, I'm on the Facebook comments right now, but I will get to the YouTube ones also. Um, all right. Countrystrike.com, although I just broke up with my band, don't ask. I know the life, buddy. It's okay. I made this website with my web programmer. I was wondering, was I on the right track so I can use the ideas on my next project? Cool. Let me check it out. right share that business again rock and country music from Croatia like it yes I accept the cookies I'm down for cookies I really like cookies Jesse and I have a thing in the Nashville office when he's here which obviously he's not because we're all quarantined but he and I split we have grandma's cookies and there's two cookies in there, and we split them after lunch. And I miss that. Anyway, those are better cookies than these cookies, but they're all great. All right, so <laughs> side note. All right, um, so download our first EP for free. Give me free music. Add an exclamation point to that. It's necessary. Add an exclamation point. Add three. I'm just kidding. Um, this menu, I want to go away. Oh, wait, no, you said it's a website. Okay, we're good. Well, then great. I love that I'm on your website and that the first thing I see is an opt-in opportunity. That's what we want, folks. I love that. All right, you've got some accolades here. And then your first single off the new album. You've got a listen here. Got it. A little bit of a bio business. It looks like some of your tracking and letting is off. Um, I, I've seen that kind of along the site, right? Like this is kind of left and then this is centered because you've got that there. And then this is centered, but this is to the right or to the left. Um, so just little things like that. They're not a big deal, but it is something to be aware of. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's not intentional. So cool. And you've got your like album launch type thing happening here. You've got more. You've got like your, I'm assuming your associated brands like sponsors or whatever, partners. And then you've got your shows in here. Okay. I'm assuming this is an IG feed. You got it. Hear new music first. Tight. 
cool. Okay, so overall, this looks good, right? There, there's a little bit of spacing stuff here that looks a little less like pro, which is not a big deal, but you know, something to be aware of. Um, your fonts are pretty consistent, right? I would make this smaller. Um, so yeah, I uh, overall, I really like this. I'd love to see this font be more consistent, like maybe it would be there, right? We wanna limit the number of fonts on a site, right? They're, they're very distinctive in helping people identify being in a place, right? So that's, I would kind of take a look at how you're using fonts, how you're using all caps, how you're using sizes. There's a little bit of inconsistency ac just across this page. So that's something to consider. Um, the reason why I like the fact that you have an opt-in at the top immediately is that typically, and if you go back and listen to, I want to say, I, to be honest, guys, I can't remember what episode it is, but a Creative Juice podcast episode, if you search websites, we talk about websites in a way that's like, um, you know, what what is the order of things? And the I kind of the formula that I start with anytime I'm I'm developing an artist website is that I start with a permission offer. So either it could be you know a messenger, it could be SMS, it could be mailing list. I typically try to lean more towards SMS and mailing list because those are a little bit more direct, whereas messenger is like a little more flippant. But some people like to do messenger. So um, I usually put that at the top. Because in theory, if they're coming to my site, they're already somehow educated or introduced to the artist. Um, they, they know who they're looking for. They got there because they did it on purpose, right? So I assume that they've kind of done those first couple stages of the buddy system themselves. And then they, the next would be permission. So I'm like, okay, how do I get their contact info? In this case, if you already have my contact info, I'm just going to scroll past it, right? Because I already, I already gave you my email and I'm not insulted because I gave you my email in the first place. So I'm not mad that your website says that you want my email, <laughs> you know, just because I already have it. That's fine. But then the next thing I want to see is the next stage in the buddy system, which would be affirmation, which means first purchase. So usually what that means is I'll put merchandise here and I'll usually put the most basic of my merchandise there because if somebody scrolls past permission maybe they're looking for something to buy that's the next thing I want them to consider and then after that I'll put ascension right which could be tour dates right um, it could be something where there's an opportunity to purchase or engage with me even deeper so maybe it's deeper levels of my merch or maybe it's a membership or maybe it's my tour dates those are typically what I associate with ascension right um, there's a myriad of things but that's the case and then I would take everything else, and oh, well, actually, if you're doing this uh, album launch, that would probably be above affirmation, you know? That would be between your email signup and your first product, because it's a little more than permission, but it's less than making a purchase, if that makes sense. The rest of this, I'm like, get that off that page. You've got a link here for it, right? Which leads to a whole other page. Put it over there. If people want your bio, like if you have press or booking agent or something like that come into your site to grab your bio um, they're going to click bio as soon as they land on the page I would take it off the home page I think it's unnecessary there use the home page as a way to ascend people from whatever stage they're in to the next one so from permission to affirmation to ascension to referral and advocacy if you have a street team right that's how I construct every home page for every artist um because it, it's just, it shows that it sells things. So like this IG stuff, I would put that on a social or media thing. Um, you could put your, and then you can also like include these links, right? Even though you've got shows on this page, go ahead and also have a link for it for people who are looking for it. But I would take everything else off of this. Just be done with it. <laughs> If you want to put listen links, you could totally do that. Um, but I would I would feature it much less. I would feature it much less and have like little buttons. Or, you know, if you can put like a little thing on the side that's got your like Spotify, iTunes, put a little deck over here. That could be cool. Um, 
but yeah in theory that's that's in, you could have a music tab up here but i would say really trim down this home page i think um, and make it more directional that's my two cents but it looks good it's obvious that your branding is on point you got the black white and red um there's an obvious like southern southern rock kind of vibe to it and that's all very on brand so i'm here for it i would just make those little tweaks to make sure that your website is doing what it needs to do for you right and that's progressing people from one one stage to the other so i hope that was helpful all right jan commented in here but i already got him mark hughes says how is the ed team during the lockdown i was getting a bit concerned as i haven't heard as much from the group we are good we are all separate and striving to put out as much for indies as we can in this time. Um, we are, you know, really trucking on more, um, more trainings and more resources, more free resources. Uh, we're just, we're trying to figure out a way to do everything we can without, we've seen so many marketers who are like exploiting you know, like the fact that people are doing things remote, like obviously it, it, a lot of the things that entrepreneur teaches is online and you do it from your house and you do it in a cave. Um, and there's a very um, difficult balance between letting people know that we're here for them while not trying to sound like we're capitalizing on a pandemic to sell our products, you know. So um, there's also a lot of musicians who are out of work. And so we're trying to implement as many resources as we can for those who are just unable to, you know, make any purchases or fund any ads right now, you know? So, but we're good. We're just, it's a, it's a lot to, um, to figure out, you know, how to do the best that we can for the indie community. So, um, all right. So, um, I'm just scrolling through the comments. All right. Travis is looking for feedback on his site. Yes, Travis, I can totally do that for ya. All right, so let's go to travisstoneham.com. Hope everybody's having fun hanging out. I know we're going long, but it's not like any of us have anywhere to be, <laughs> right? All right, so the first thing is an opt-in. You know I'm not mad about that. I like this opt-in form. That's cool. I dig it. Oh, okay. So I thought I was looking at a... Oh, is this your whole site? I guess you're just getting right down to business, right? So the only thing I would... So I think this, this looks good. It's simple. It's clean. The It's all legible. The, the photos are good. The uh, colors are good. I would say like try to add a little bit more to this that really injects some of your personality. Right now it's very like, okay, it's a dude with music, you know? Um, inject some of yourself, your personality. Give, um, maybe like tease a little bit about, you know, what you sound like, you know? I mean, I see that you, it says songwriting and it looks like you might be like a singer songwriter, but I have no clue, you know? And I know that people will probably end up here because they already know who you are, but still, you know, give them a little taste. Um, so that's what I would recommend. And then I would change from get free tracks to something that's a little bit more casual, like send them to me, you know, <laughs> or something like that. Um, because it's just more fun to click on a button that is that has some whimsical or badassness, depending on your brand, right? Um, it's just more fun to, and you feel more connected to the artist. So, um, and then obviously you've got your, um, you know, your, your benefits here, which I think are great, legible. I like the, you know, the icons match and you've got another button here. So yeah, this is a good start, you know? Um, I, and I actually, I don't necessarily think that, I know opt-in pages are typically very, very long. I don't necessarily think that needs to happen. Um, like for example, if you want to, spam mine <laughs> don't spam mine please um it will scan for you as an entrepreneur subscriber and kick you out <laughs> so, but this is my landing page for my for my experience this is no longer live so don't bother <laughs> but um this is literally how it was it was this photo 
and then I wrote a little bit here right um it was you know just going and I did all of my tracks over five days um but the the idea here is that like yes this was here to give it kind of a brand consistency but I did all the selling for this before they ever got to the page you know um but you can see like there's there's a story about it so I'd recommend kind of getting that in there but you don't need to have some giant sales page you know um, sometimes those can work, but I would recommend everybody also test something that is very simple and short and succinct. Um, this isn't even as succinct as it could have been, but doing something that is, you know, less, like less is more sometimes, you know, so try it. You can, uh, I do that with ads too. I'll try ads that are like, yo, click. <laughs> And then I'll do ads that are like, oh my gosh, I wrote this album. It was so great. And I want to share it with you. And there's these cellos and it's awesome. You know what I mean? So try those things. Um, so anyway, my point, Travis, is that you don't necessarily need to worry about making some super huge long sales page. I don't think that's necessary. However, if you're going to run ads to this, I think that it could be, it could behoove you to try another page, you know, that isn't that. Um... Just taking a look at your blog. Tight. Yeah, it looks like you've kind of punched these in recently, which is cool. The photos look a little low res. It might be, yeah, your photos aren't low res. It's just your provider that is, oh, maybe it was just my internet connection. Weird. It's going to high res after I click on it. Dun, dun, dun. So anyway, I'm not really sure what's causing that, but... That's not on you. Um, you might want to investigate it. I don't know why it would look low res until you click on it, um, but I'm sure that's just a plug-in thing. So, but yeah, overall, like keep it simple. Don't feel the need to add 50,000 things if you don't have something important to say. And um, yeah, I would just take a look at, you know, injecting a little more of yourself into this, but otherwise I think it looks good. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> All right, continue on in the comments. Mark says, I'm thinking of switching my WordPress theme. Any thoughts in general? Don't want to start from scratch and I don't want to lose any stuff. Um, initial site is gardeniasociety.org. Cool. If it'll load, did I spell it right? There we go. All right, cool. So we've got a business question, a business marketing question more here. Um, I like the animations you have from section to section. That's cool. Um, the only thing I would say is that I noticed that the load time on it was a little slow, which is usually attributed to the theme. Um, the entrepreneur site, we're working on optimizing it, but a big reason why its load time is not great is because we use Thrive Themes, um, Thrive Architect for the theme. And it just takes so much time to load. It's so JavaScript heavy. And considering that you have all these animations, I would bet you that's where your load time is a little bit, you know, not great. So let's take a look, right? If we go to speed test, and usually I use, um, oops, Google page speed test, right? Um, all right, and it's called Page Speeds Insights. So let's go ahead and copy your home page. I know Artist Relief wasn't actually the home page, and we analyze it. And this is what I do on a lot of sites. Now, this is not the end all be all, right? Like, there's a lot of different page speed insight kind of tools, and they will all give you different lengths of time, and that's just how it is. So it's just like analytics. Google Analytics and Facebook Analytics won't tell you the exact same thing because data is not perfect. So this is not perfect either. So it could possibly be um, that your site is a little slow because it's being redirected right now. Um, but two, <laughs> two out of 100. Don't feel bad. Lots of sites are in the 20s, you know, so that's not terrible. But this is really, this is a long time, you know, for people on um, you can actually look at people who are, you know, like 
what is the first meaningful paint, right? Like how long does the site stay white before they get there? Um, you know, and then it'll actually give you kind of an idea of what things are happening. So yeah, look here. Your JavaScript and CSS inline is below a bunch of plugins and it even gives you a recommendation for what you can, um, actions you can take to to contribute to that. And look at, this is 10 seconds. This is almost exclusively your problem with your load time. Everything else in here is in like milliseconds. Not terrible. So, um, yep. And then there, you know, it'll give you a couple of other things here. Um, but that's, that's one thing I recommend, um, with your page immediately would be, um, when you're considering looking at, you know, changing your theme, page speed is so important. Now, as far as the look of your theme, I like it. <laughs> I don't think that I, I like this animation, but is it necessary for me as just a consumer to know what your site's about? Absolutely not. You could easily put this in like a smaller block with no animations that was like performers, venues, you know, um, that would be totally acceptable. So, um, yeah, so that's my thought there as far as like changing your stuff. Um, but overall, I mean, it looks nice. I, do I think that your current theme is like the only way you could build this? No, I think page speed is one of the uh, number one factors to look at when you're thinking about rotating themes. So that's my two cents on that. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to try to wrap it up because I know that I'm going so long, but I really am trying to get to everyone's questions. Now that we're open to the public, there's just so much more here. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to get through the last of this. Um, okay. Thomas said, is that, uh, is that Chrome on Mac? Yes. You said it does good on Windows Chrome and Firefox. Okay, that's cool. But he's sort of errorware. He's like those letters. Ugh. <laughs> it's an issue with Elementor. Yeah, totally. Um, Travis said, what's funny is the pics are high res on mobile, so I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, that's weird. I, I don't know the answer, Travis. It, it's something in your tech stack, but I can't say definitively. All right, so I am going to the YouTube comments. Mishi says she's here now. <laughs> um, she said she didn't know about the call to action button on Facebook. Awesome. Yep. You can put it right at the top. And if you want to know how to put a button on your fan page on Facebook, go to fan page optimization. We also teach a bunch of other things about how um, just how to use your Facebook page in a way that makes sense. Um, because obviously a lot of us just think like, oh, it's a page. And I post things there. Um, but there are ways that you can optimize your fan page to actually be working for you um, in a similar way that your website does. So definitely recommend that. Um, okay, so Greg said, can you share your screen? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I know I forgot to share my screen. Has anyone tried Banzoogle for mailing lists? They have one module there. Maybe they use MailChimp. I don't know. Um, I, I'm not familiar enough with Banzoogle's mailing list service, um, but yeah, I can't really comment on it. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Alexander says, yeah, I hate Banzoogle. <laughs> We're not fans of all things Banzoogle, um, which I know some people are bummed about. Um, and it's not that we have anything against the company or the people. It's just that some of their... Uh, a smaller company is just not going to have the development dollars of a larger one. It's just all there is to it. And since there are a small team of, you know, musicians turned, you know, developers and turned to customer service and whatever, um, it's just, it takes longer for that kind of business to develop things in a way that is with the, you know, most recent marketing trends. So, you know, nothing against Banzoogle or anything. It's just that there are other tools that are, more efficient at doing the things that we think are the most important for indies to accomplish in order to market themselves properly. So I'll just put that out there. <laughs> um, how to set up your own design landing. Okay, I see you, Thomas Love. You're in both. <laughs> I got you. I see you in both. Um, all right. Someone said, I also hate Banzoogle. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
All right. I'm just sorry. I'm reading through comments. A lot of these are you guys chatting with each other, which I love. That's what it should be. Um, Dallas said, tell the joke about the pixel. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the joke about the pixel. <laughs> um, somebody came in and said, check out my page. I'm blowing up for show. So you're either joking or you're spam. Which are you? Don't make me mark you. All right. Uh, Brett of Glenderay and the Essentials says, Hi, Cran. I did enter a post. It's gone. Aw. I also posted a live chat, but it's gone as well. No matter. I'm going to continue with the founder stuff pre-Thursday meeting. Have a great one. Brett of Glenderay and Essentials is in our current founder session, which is very exciting. We're very happy about that. Tom said, anyone else living in Europe would love to know how these strategies work here. They work everywhere, Tom. Everywhere. It's digital marketing is, now that we are a global society, it's it works everywhere. You might have to change languages, but it works. <laughs> um, Alexander said, how do you add pixel events to the page? I have page view only. So if you go into Facebook Business Manager and... Um, go to pixel <laughs> it'll actually help you set up events it's called events manager but you can actually set it up that way it will do it automatically for you when you enter the url for whatever page you're trying to add another standard event to so um that's how you can do that it's in business manager dirty chime said i took china out yesterday but it wasn't actually allocating a lot of budget there yes china is definitely not on our green lights uh list dirty chime um, I would, I, yeah, I'd recommend looking at some of your audiences, you know, our green light warmth audience. And actually this is going to be coming out on the next podcast, but our green light list of countries that are like deemed safe because there are spam and bots in every single country, right? Like it, it's dumb to be like, oh, first world countries don't have spam and bots and everyone else does. It's not like that at all. Um, but we do, um, we see countries kind of rise and fall in the spam and bot and click farm categories. And a lot of it is because, um, you know, it's a lot of it's linked to the economy of that country and how it's doing right now, which is why as much as we love Spain and the culture in Spain and a lot of our Indies would like to market in Spain, Spain will absolutely um, cause issues with your data. France is a recent change, um, which totally sucks because tons of our um, obviously Canadian indies and French indies, but Canadian indies even speak French and have fans in France. But now we're at a, at a point where um, we cannot market to France because it will completely overtake your data and your budget. So, um, so yeah, just take a double look at that. China is definitely not one that we've ever included in Greenlight for you know, for that reason, because it feeds just the wrong people into your stuff. Um, all right. So Zeke was using Thrive and WordPress with member mouse. That's what entrepreneur uses. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, um, I can't criticize that. All right. Um, Uncomely Music says your opinion on USB cassettes with tunes and videos extra as merch popular so I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about usb drives um anything that you sell like except for downloads downloads are a piece of merch that musicians understand as not valuable because they can stream and so downloads inherently have the same value, which is that they can stream for free, so why download? However, everything else is exactly how you package it, right? So if you have a USB bracelet or a USB drive or you know anything like that, um, if, you, if what you put on that is valuable and you can convince people that it's valuable, it therefore is valuable, <laughs> right? Just like, you know, cryptocurrency and there's all these like crazy coins popping everywhere. All those coins are worth exactly what people are willing to pay for it. Right? Why is Adobe so expensive? Because people are willing to pay that for it. And if they weren't willing to pay that for it, they'd have to make it cheaper. So the same applies. And I know that seems like a really hard line, linear kind of way to think about it. 
but your merch is exactly as valuable as you can convince people it is. So if you have a USB drive that has some stuff on it and you make it super exclusive and there's a fun experience around it um, and the way that they receive it is cool, it'll totally sell. You just have to sell it. You know that whole thing like <laughs> selling snow to a snowman? If you're a good salesman, you can sell it. <laughs> so, um, all right. Yeah, we've been having some issues with Linktree. Thanks, you guys, for contributing to that question. Um, that's really valuable. Um, Alexander was saying, I was thinking that I could do like a landing page on my website too instead of Linktree. But if I have multiple buttons, how would I pixel them on my site? Um, you can pixel them through um, click tracks. Um, they can track certain buttons that are clicked. And you can do that through the events manager. Uh, similarly to what I was saying to that other question earlier. Um, you can actually have it fire when they click on the button. So, um, but yeah, that's what I do. My music links are all on my site. So I pixel them when they land and which is a view content event. And then I, when they click, I've got an event that fires off. So I hope that's helpful, Alexandra. Thanks for contributing so much to the chat today. All right, last question, everybody. And then I'm going to get out of here and do some work. <laughs> as much as I've loved hanging with you guys. Um, Jeffrey York, another founder. Um, I left a link on the Indies page that you couldn't see before jumping out of there. Hope you can get to it. All right. I got you, Jeffrey. I got you. Opening that page now. Da -dun 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 -dun. Scrolling all the way down. Um, there he is. Major player dot band. Let me share my screen with y'all so we can last discussion together before I take off. All right. This is the landing page. Ooh, this color is interesting. Okay. Oh, I'm assuming that video is not there yet. Got it. Noted. I love how you have three arrows and then a hand. Like in case they didn't know what the arrows are, there's also this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's cute. I, it doesn't bother me. Um, okay, cool. So you've got a button here. Cool. That leads to this, which has no pixel on it. What are you using? Whatever you're using needs to have a pixel on it. That's the rules. So yeah, this button is a little bit long. It's almost not clear it's a button because it has so many words. So I would consider that, figure, figure out a way to make that more succinct. Um, something you could do is like take the game time above the button as just like regular text and then summer vibes experience. Or well, no, because it's game time summer vibes. Game time summer vibes. Yeah, that's long. You could change it to an acronym if you made it clear above that what the acronym stood for. But right now, like it wasn't even clear to me that like you could put an enter put enter in front of game time so that it's on its own line but i'm sure that'll change via device as well all right so this is too small so i would make that bigger um i think too it looks like this is on a click funnels page if i were guessing though i don't know for sure yeah maybe it isn't i would put a different background here put something to separate this experience from this make this like this is a section right and then scroll down this is another section i would definitely change that up to do that and like maybe put it through here get inside to bring the summertime vibes question mark that might just be a typo <laughs> Um, you'll experience what's behind the music. Where did the idea for game time come from? How long did it take to record the song? How did you get those killer drum and bass sounds? What was the inspiration for the lyrics? How did the musicians in your band impact the outcome for the song? So I don't know if these are in there because you're going to write things and like you wrote questions to inspire yourself to write them. 
or if it's said like in the voice of the fan. But the fact that I don't know means that other people probably won't know either. <laughs> so that's just something to consider. Um, fill in the form and press submit. All right, cool. So I would identify, you've got a couple of different fonts going on here, fonts and a couple of different sizes. Um, and I, you know, I, I like this color, but it might be cool to, I don't know what this color, it, this back looks kind of like it's a DDDD, like not quite zero. Um, it might actually even as much as plain black is, you know, has a bad vibe. Like a lot of people are like, oh, that's lame. I actually think that it would probably look better against this color. Um, and the green is a little assertive. So maybe finding a green that is a little bit more complimentary. Um, I definitely recommend like if you search um, complimentary color wheel, you can enter this color in here, like your pinkish pastel color, whatever this is, and it'll give you complimentary colors that are still very good for call to action. Um, yeah, so that, that's something that I would consider. Um, cool. So yeah, I would, I think that the, the lyric or the, um, fan quotes and recommendations are cool, but I'd like to see more like pictures and video and interactive things for what you're building. Right. Um, because that's how you're going to convince people to experience something from you is by showing them what that would be like. So obviously you've, you're planning on putting a video here, but I would integrate more photo and video further down the page especially because as they get further down, more text isn't going to be what convinces them if they didn't already sign up. So that's my two cents there. Um, but overall, you know, you've got your little Favicon up here and, you know, it's looking good. It's a good start. Awesome. All right, guys, I have gone so long, but it's because I love you and I know that you wanted to get some questions answered. So, we are good to go for today. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, it's just a reminder, Circa goes live every Monday on IG. If you want to hop over there at 1.30 on Mondays. And next week, same time right here, we're going to have another uh, Indies Live session. It might be with Jack. I'm not quite sure, but I think so. Um, and if you want, on Saturday, I will be live for Corinne's Corner going over my nine month release plan and if you don't already know what that is you can go to our youtube profile and check that out um but i'd love to see more of you there as well as we look at the hot mess that is my release right now <laughs> so but either way thanks so much for hanging out thanks for your patience y'all are great i love hanging out with you every time we get to do this so um i'm just looking forward to doing more of it all right so stay indie work hard endless hustle and I'll see you next time, guys. Have a great one.